Hey guys, it's Gordon. Um, I want to do a short video on surface preparation and adhesives. As we're talking about hand plane tote repair, um, I'm often asked, you know, what, what's my choice for adhesive or which one should I use? And instinctively, my first thought with that is, um, I think more care and more, more uh, effort needs to be put into surface preparation uh, as opposed to adhesive. So if you've had a bad experience and you've had a glue fail, or you, you put something together and it just didn't last as long as you wanted it to, uh, I would ask you to step back and let's take a look at <clears throat> how you prep the surface. So to help you understand, uh, I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I do and some of the things that I use, the tools that I use, uh, to help ensure that we're making the best possible bond that we can. So uh, I love analogies, but here's one. You know, If you've ever had uh, something welded or you've seen a weld fail, you know, it's a crappy weld. You know, someone tries to fix a frame or a trailer or a metal part on a lawnmower and the weld looks kind of goobery or the surface wasn't prepped right and sure enough, the bond fails so it comes apart. Well, wood is really not much different in that it's a, a material, right? We've got something that we need to bond together and surface preparation is so important. So <clears throat> I've got a couple props here for this video. And what I want to talk about, of course, is... Um, you know, a traditional Brazilian rosewood tote that's been broken and somebody wants to glue this back together. And I know instinctively you just wanna, you know, uh, butter that up and clamp it and, and call it good. And I'm gonna show you why we don't do that um, without some type of surface preparation, but there's one. And then I have, um, what do we have? Bolivian rosewood and some Brazilian rosewood and Bacote and some domestics too. And one of the things that I use is under magnification, which, you know, again, take a scientific approach to this. And if we look at these under, you know, uh, 40X or even 1000X, it's amazing what you see. And so I just have a simple, um, you know, digital microscope that I use that's lighted and it'll help us kind of project the image and get a really close look at what's going on on the surface. So the short story is this, you can't just take a hundred year old Brazilian rosewood tote like this one that's been broken, although it seems clean and that's a really fine line, we can't just put adhesive on that and, uh, and bond these together because over the years it has oxidized. The pores of the wood are really important for us to help gain a secure bond. And if we look at this really close, and I'm just gonna move the camera and this is gonna be the easiest way for me to do this, but I'm gonna go right to my computer screen for a second and let's take a close look at this under magnification. And this is about a, a oh, I don't know, 500 times. We'll say 500X. So this is Brazilian rosewood. And just to kind of give you an idea as I pan through this, it's got a almost petrified forest look. There's no pores. There's nothing for me to grab onto with adhesives. And if I move toward the edge of the, the break, let's get over here. Um, it's almost glossy. So this is gonna be oils or sweat or whatever else has found its way onto the surface of the material. And there's a good look there. Um, it's fibrous, but yet there's really nothing to hold on to and it's almost glossed over. So it's as if it's got a finish on it and there's a really good shot. So super shiny. In some cases, this could even delaminate when we try and glue it, but that's just a a molten lava look of you know what's been in existence over the years now in comparison let me show you what a fresh cut brazilian rosewood looks like and here it is so i'm going to kind of pan over this this is a cross section of a of a brazilian tote and you can see this is unsanded so i get a really nice uniform look but what you'll find along the way are these guys these are called medullary rays. This is a natural formation in the wood. This is part of the tree and they're radial lines or pith lines that move from the center of the tree out to the, the outside bark. It allows the plant, the organism, to move moisture from the center of the tree radially and minerals and other things. So medullary rays, super common in uh, like white oak, you know, and you'll see these in quarter sawn materials. But on a super clean cut, like this one where the surface has been prepped, 
we're using these as anchor points, right? Those are voids in the wood. And again, this is under 500x magnification. We see these open, clean yeah, little anchors for us to grab onto with adhesive. So there it is. I went from a 100-year-old crack that's been used to a brand new Brazilian um, piece of rosewood. And I wanted you to understand the importance of surface prep. One more point is that I'm going to go to this Bolivian for a second. <clears throat> this is a great way to identify species, by the way, if we're taking a, a scientific approach to it. But you'll see a little bit smaller collection of medullaries, and they're a little tighter together. This is in a Bolivian rosewood. And this has been prepped. And when I say prepped, it's usually saw cut or scraped, right? I don't want to sand anything because when I sand it, here's what happens. Now I'm going to move from an unsanded Bolivian rosewood to sanded. Okay, and when I get down here into the sanded area, it's a little bit harder to see on this video, but all my little pores are filled up with fibers, right? It's sanded and it's got a paler look, but those are all loose fibers that are now on the surface and they filled up some of my anchor points. So I like a really clean scraped surface either saw cut or scraped don't want to sand it or polish it but i just wanted you to understand the difference between um, this is bacote in which if you've seen this under magnification it's super recognizable looks like a little miniature forest fire um, this would be the side grain on bacote now this is dusty right it's been sitting on my bench and you can see all these loose fibers these are things that with a wire brush or a quick cleanup we can make sure that we don't have any loose debris in there. Any foreign particles are gonna just reduce your contact. So it's really about surface prep. Before we get to glues and adhesives, I just wanted you to understand that making sure we have a really good surface to bond to is super important. So I'll throw this one up. I went domestic on you just for a second. What do you think this guy is? I'll give you a clue, it's super blonde. And of course we're looking for tiger, uh, rays and we're looking for bird's eyes and if you're not familiar with this one of course that is hard maple so that's what a maple looks like and what else do I have I've got a piece of walnut here walnut has a very distinct um, fuzzy look to it this is scraped but those medullary rays are open again those are things that I'm looking for in terms of a clean flat surface for proper prop so what's my point? My point is this, before we get into the right adhesive and understanding what's out there, uh, you know, in terms of glues and putting these things back together, I can't emphasize enough that we can't just grab any surface or any, uh, you know, 100 year old rosewood tote like this one I have on the screen now. Again, it's got a petrified look, the pores are all closed, it's got debris and other things in it. Um, I just don't want to try and glue anything to that, so we'll have to open him up a little bit. Um, I think that's about it. This is somebody's glue line. Actually, if we can take a look at it. But it's fun. Um, if you ever have a chance to, to play with um, you know, magnification and identify certain species, this is one of the things that uh, I've enjoyed along the way. And it certainly helps in terms of the ability to identify species the ability to identify impurities and proper preparation. So there you have it. Um, again, looking forward to sharing more videos with you as we repair totes. And uh, this is just a quick filler. Look for my next video on the horn repair that we've got going right now. That'll be out soon. And like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, pre please post them below. Uh, it's always a, a work in progress and it's always um, an exercise in sharing knowledge, sharing experience, and uh, fielding questions. So thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.